Hi, my name is uh, Martin Rocheisen. I'm the founder of uh, Diamond Foundry. Uh, we produce diamond using technology, and our team has created the largest diamond on Earth. Uh, I'm holding up the largest diamond on Earth right now. Uh, it has a precision wafer finish as suitable for integration with chips. The way we produce diamond is we start with methane, the greenhouse gas, and we crystallize it into diamond using zero emission energy. So it is basically as green as it gets on any material. And uh, when we started 10 years ago, we had a 30-year plan, starting with uh, introducing uh, sustainably created diamond wherever mined diamond has been able to go. <coughs> that was the first decade starting 2013. Uh, we're now entering the phase where we put uh, single crystal diamond wafers behind every chip. And in 10 years, then we plan to introduce diamond as a semiconductor per se. <coughs> now, in this talk today, I wanted to take uh, time and look back at those 10 years, first 10 years, where we basically competed against a cartel, uh, the diamond cartel, and uh, share some of the lessons and experiences learned about this. Um, I'll talk about this for the first time here, and I, I don't, don't plan to talk about it again, so it's like a unique talk today. Um, and uh, share some of those lessons, uh, maybe, maybe instructive to people about how to deal with uh, 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 incumbents uh, in any other industries. Um, the diamond cartel, per se, is uh, led by the beers, and partnered with the, the, the Kremlin-based uh, diamond miner. Uh, the beers itself, as well known, uh, founded by the inventor of apartheid, criminally indicted by the US DOJ, then ultimately settled just around the time we got our company got founded, uh, a settlement that barred them from uh, Russian sales. Uh, on the other hand, we have the, uh, the, the Russian team that is uh, shipping, even today, according to uh, diamond industry standards, shipping conflict-free diamonds, because the industry defines conflict-free as, well, as whatever isn't uh, promoted by some rebel group, and Putin clearly is not a rebel group, according to those standards. So uh, this is the thing. Now, so the, the way cartels operate is very sy systemic and pervasive with a lot of different associations. It starts with, uh, I mean, the point about cartels is uh, make, make more profits or pricing control. I'll talk about this in a second, uh, how this being used and how they uh, uh, use the governments around the world thing. Marketing is a key item uh, to uh, 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 put out the, the, the rules that, uh, the, the value propositions that allow people to uh, believe in it along the lines of uh, diamond is a store of value. Well, if you have pricing control, then you can turn it into a store of value. <clears throat> Diamonds are billions of years old. Well, uh, you know, the, the, the ocean, the, ocean and the, uh, the, the water in the oceans is billions of years older than any diamond. So uh, the, uh, it's, uh, it's still part of the marketing thing of billions of years old is value, etc. And so I think the... Uh, 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 th this, is, this is being supported by a lot of associations formed that are seemingly independent and support uh, the cartel messaging. And uh, certain lock on editorial I'll talk about, lock on advertising distribution, lock on retail distribution, etc. Uh, <clears throat> one key cartel innovation is how to control pricing. So you have... Uh, the large industrial miners, you have a lot of artisanal miners, uh, people on the right side called artisan miners. You have 20,000 different retail, uh, diamond retailers. So how do you manage uh, pricing across those? And a key innovation is uh, collude, in, collude in broad daylight. You know? So uh, <coughs> there's a 
index being formed by a company a person called Martin Rappaport, who uh, has an index that's supposedly descriptive of the pricing out there, but in reality is viewed as prescriptive. And so this is used as a coordination across the industry to uh, determine pricing, and it's been functioning very well. And it, it let consumers effectively overpay tens of billions of dollars. Um, when we got started, uh, <coughs> we were producing 5,000 carats in 2016. The beers was producing 26 million, uh, 28 million uh, million carats. I introduced me to the CEO of uh, the beers, and uh, he basically answered, "I'm going to kill you." And so I think the from a <laughs> from a <laughs> from a uh, uh, from a uh, uh, startup perspective, you know, if a, an incumbent threatens to kill you, it's probably a, a, a good product market fit. Um, and so uh, the, uh, uh, we kept going at it. The, uh, um, these same people, uh, so I, I think the early on, the retailer, retail distribution, a retailer wanted to say, said, great, I'm going to offer to my customers, a little retailer in the uh, Bay Area, I'm going to offer my customers this uh, diamond foundry diamond next to a De Beers diamond. Well, it took uh, 48 hours for that small retailer to get a, get a call from uh, the Beers corporate officer and say, stop selling this stuff or we're going to pull all of our product and you're going to be out of business. So I think uh, very aggressive actions early on barring uh, retail distribution. Uh, regulatory battlefield, I mean, we are through thousands of uh, pages and a lot of legal fees uh, in a way that hasn't been visible to the public. Uh, it happened behind the scenes with uh, America's widest shoe law firms battling out at these different agencies about the essence of, you know, what is a diamond? Can you call a, a man-created diamond a diamond? So, I mean, this is something where the beer stepped up early on and saying, we only want the word diamond to be used for mine diamonds, otherwise it's illegal. So that slightly backfired to the extent that <coughs> I said, well, that's not going to work for us. I need to speak with some people. And so even as a founder, I mean, it's possible to get uh, a meeting with the head of antitrust, head of, F head of the FTC in Washington, D.C. We did these things and we actually did get early on the uh, FTC to uh, change the definition of diamond dating back to 1954 to say, you know, it, it does include uh, man-made diamonds. Um, <coughs> when you try to do marketing for your new diamond product, you know, you, uh, one key outlet is uh, all the uh, uh, women-focused magazines at, you see at every airport stand, you know, Cosmopolitan, Elle, Marie Claire, et cetera, like uh, all of them. They actually, all of them are, tend to be owned by Hearst publisher. And so we got calls, you know, by excited uh, junior editors at Marie Claire, et cetera, saying, this is great. I want to tell people about this. Writing an article. Uh, the article even does go online for like two to three minutes until it suddenly disappears, you know. And so again, the, uh, the beers and the diamond producers association and that back then uh, just call the uh, editor-in-chief and say, well, you can't talk about lab diamonds, you can't mention Diamond Foundry in any, any of your magazines, otherwise we're going to pull the, pull the ad dollars, you know. <clears throat> and so, uh, uh, very aggressive, it really uh, created desperation in our PR teams because every single time we got blocked by being in any of these magazines. Um, when you think about, okay, then you think about, okay, if they don't, cover you, they care about, the publication care about money, so let's just spend money on them, let's just advertise on them, you know. And um, not just the Hearst magazines, but the uh, digital outlets like Pop Sugar. it's a uh, uh, San Francisco-based digital website with a lot of reach to a lot of young women. And again, overtly, uh, we had a complete deal together, and then it gets blocked by their chief revenue officer. We can't, we can't mess with <laughs> the, 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 the BS advertisers, so sorry. We can't, you can't, we can't take your ad dollars. Um, the, uh, 
Other working thing is working with these consulting companies. I mean, S&P Global, for instance. You know, S&P Global is uh, managing the uh, S&P 500 index, so you kind of hope they're in incorruptible. But you know, they work for pay with uh, a lot of clients and uh, put out the beers, engage them to do a so-called true cost study. And uh, there was like a, a writer with an astrology background writing that article with completely false math and completely, uh, I mean, it's been debunked and ridiculed, that study. But, you know, they put it out and they got, at the point where the study came out, they threw a lot of journalists at it and it got a lot of impact. And it claimed, you know, that the reality is a lab grown diamonds, it takes a tenth of the energy to grow them in a reactor than it takes to dig them out of the ground in a mine. You know, because mining is, you know, these trucks are driving around there. It's very inefficient, and so it takes a lot of energy, actually. So the study claimed the opposite, but again, the, uh, uh, once you see confusion in the broad public, uh, it's very hard to correct them over time. Uh, uh, there are individuals who are in incorruptible. Um, the uh, uh, has engaged a consultant to dig up dirt on us, uh, saying, well, we can't, you, these guys must have some carbon footprint. Uh, the guy said, no, they don't. And like, oh, no, they just, write, just write us a study that claims it. <laughs> and the guy's, I quit. <laughs> So uh, that's great. Uh, we have other cases with uh, Boston Consulting Group, BCG, is uh, made uh, a, uh, and, and Bain and & Bain and Co. Bain & Co. told me, the analysts, well, we, uh, we interview a little bit, but you know, we will always represent the uh, beer stance because they've paid us for decades. Boston Consulting Group, too, they uh, put out law material for uh, De Beers uh, financial projections and uh, it has the most beautiful disclaimer in it that disclaims anything. So if you ever plan to rob a bank, uh, engage uh, BCG to get a disclaimer. This disclaimer will point, point that, you know, pointing, pointing the gun didn't really mean anything aggressive. So I think the... Uh, uh, those were some of the issues, uh, roadblocks we had. Now, the great break we got in 2018 from nothing than the beers itself, because somehow they decided, we cannot, we have a t we're selling 28 million carats of uh, mine diamonds, but we're selling a couple of carats of uh, lab grown too. And so, overnight, you know, that uh, opened up for us the entire market, because suddenly, you know, there's a lot of large buyers in India, they set up side shops and got their, their Yahoo email addresses parallel to their corporate email addresses to communicate with us. And suddenly these guys could all like engage with us and here we go. And uh, so I think the, uh, that was a great break for us. The public support too, you know, uh, uh, Pope Francis invited us, spoke up, spoke up against mining uh, and, and other things. And uh, finally, the, the power of uh, incorruptible women, you know. I mean, Taylor Swift, you cannot pay to do anything. And she's been wearing our, our the jewelry of our consumer uh, division uh, really frequently. Uh, Emma Watson featured it on a his Time's Up with our jewelry re uh, during Me Too. But in a way, it uh, represents for us Time's Up for uh, cartel diamonds as well. Uh, now, we've been growing uh, our production steadily. Uh, quarter by quarter, here shows our Washington State foundry. And uh, as of today, uh, consumers are winning, and they don't need to overpay anymore. And as of today, more than 50% of all diamonds sold in America are uh, man-created diamonds. In fact, so big, big change uh, on this. And... Uh, if you look at the large, uh, large diamonds, tinker it up, you know, De Beers used to do 5,000 times as many carats as we in 2014. As of today, we produce uh, as many large diamonds uh, each week as De Beers produces per year. You know? So, very, very big change here. And uh, 
our next mission now is, you know, if you, if you look, uh, if you're a founder and do market research, it's very important to uh, look at what Twitter says, uh, X says, and uh, especially an account written by a guy who is not Jerome Powell. And he pinpoints very clearly the U.S. economy is based on, has two pillars, you know, Taylor Swift and NVIDIA. And so at this point, we're aiming to be the first company uh, with a mission to serve both pillars of the U.S. economy. And uh, we're very excited about uh, this step. Um, and unfortunately, I'm missing one slide that had a QR code with uh, where you can uh, go to vray.com and get a uh, use special discount on a jewelry with Slush Spark. Uh, you can uh, check out and get some, get, get your cartel busting jewelry ordered for the holidays. Thank you so much. <laughs>